I'm going to read you a scene. So this is very early in the novel. I should warn you that I've italianized, is that a word? Italianized the names. So the Capulets are now the Capuletti. Uh, Friar Lawrence is Friar Lorenzo. Um, at this moment, the nurse, uh, the, the book starts with the nurse going into labor. Her own daughter has already died. Friar Lorenzo has arranged with her husband Pietro for her to go to the Capuletti to be their wet nurse. Um, in this scene, she is with Lady Capuletta in the Porto room. Think about the relationship between these two women. What can the reader learn about class, about gender, about marriage, about medicine, about religious belief and practice in this era from this scene? This is really exciting. I, this is like the mm -hmm. second time that I've gotten to do a reading from this, so I'm thrilled. Juliet has a ferocious hunger, rousing herself six or seven times during our first night to nurse. I do not bother to lace my blouse, keeping a breast ready so she'll not cry and wake the house. But to feed her, I must be fed. In some quiet hour, hungry from her hunger, I steal up to the table beside the parto bed where remnants of Lady Capuletta's supper remain. A taper flickers beneath a portrait of Santa Margarete. Is it any wonder the saints favor the rich? for offering up such extravagant devotions even while they sleep, when the rest of us can barely afford to keep a candle lit upon a work table when we are full awake? In the dancing light, I pick the darkest of the meat. Even cold, it is the finest I've ever eaten. I close my eyes, sucking poultry flesh from bone, savoring the flavors until I feel another set of eyes upon me, Lady Capuletta's. I slip the purloined bone inside my sleeve so I'll not be called a thief. But well-fed as Lady Capuletta is, she does not seem to mark the food I've taken without leave. She stares at my untrussed breasts. Is that what they do, she asks? Suckle like piglets till they fall flab? Standing so close beside her parto bed, I see she's hardly more than a child herself, consumed by girlish fear at what her body is, what it will become. Time will do what time will do, I say. No one stays. I peer at her and make a careful guess. 14, forever. She looks down at the bumps that even after pregnancy barely bring a curve to her nightshirt and says, I'm already 15. An age when buds turn into bloom, I tell her. An age that is but a third of my own. Her face, her neck are smooth as a statue. Her, head, her bead and braid strung hair are shining. Lady Capuletta is that beauty the poets call a just plucked rose and gossiping old dowagers call a coin that's not yet spent. Wondering that this is not enough to please her, I add, and blessed that your child is healthy. She cannot know what these words cost me. So what if it is, she asks. Not it, I say, she, a beautiful daughter of a beautiful mother. Some hard emotion pulls at the edges of her pretty mouth. A mother who should have borne a son, she says. You are young, I tell her. There will be sons yet. I am young, but my lord husband is not. She shudders when she speaks of him. Neither is he patient. Surely tonight all her husband's thinking of is how much it costs to dower the daughter of so fine a house. That will shrivel more than a man's impatience. But who am I to tell her so? He'll climb right back upon me, she says, to make a son. Fear tinges her words. Perchance it's more than age that makes them ill-matched. He must run hot, as men do. And she cold, as I for one do not. Although never having seen her husband, I cannot say whether there is anything in him that might please any woman, especially one barely out of girlhood. The midwife will tell him he must wait, as all men do, I say, thinking of how my own husband Pietro has brought me here out of our marriage bed. Her fingers, heavy with pearl rings, tug the gold and garnet cross that hangs around her neck, then turn the coral bracelets upon either wrist. Extravagant talismans, doubtless from her husband's family, which no one thought to unclasp at night so she might sleep in comfort. She's sorely in need of mothering herself, new mother though she is. I could sit upon this grand bed, stroking her hair and whispering soothing words until her hands lie calm. I might tell her that many a wife whose husband gives her no pleasure in the getting of babies still finds great joy in the children she's born. But Juliet begins to stir, and I turn my back to the parto bed to take up the child who is my charge. Thank you. Please, feel free to applaud me.
Thank you.